Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a fantastic day. As you can probably tell, I'm sitting next to the latest painting that I did. It was a commissioned piece and I was super excited to do it because this is the first time in a very, very long time that I have worked in dimensions this large. It's two feet by three feet. So that was a really fun challenge to tackle painting something at that size after so long of not doing so. And uh, yeah, I love painting animals. And so this project was just really, really exciting. And I'm really happy to get to share it with you. I time-lapsed, I have a time-lapsed video because uh, this took many, many hours to paint. Uh, so I time lapse it so that you can get uh, a sense of what it looked like coming to life in a very condensed amount of time. I'm going to talk a little bit about my process, some techniques, and yeah, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. As you can see, I have a very light outline sketch on the canvas, and I am using acrylic to start with here, but I did wind up transitioning to watercolor because the client wanted a watercolor sort of appearance and while you can kind of achieve that with acrylics i'm much more comfortable with watercolors and uh if you know how to use them on canvas you can make it work so i will tell you when it uh becomes watercolor paints that i begin using but i am starting off with acrylic here just black and white and I want to go back and talk a little bit about the drawing. When you are working on such a large scale, it can be a bit of a challenge to blow up your drawing. I, of course, am using a reference image. Uh, this one I normally use uh, unsplash.com. I think the one I used this time is from Pixabay. Uh, I'm going to try and link it if I can find it again in the video's description if you're interested in seeing the original image. But when you're trying to scale up an image from its original size or what you see on your computer screen to a much larger real life size, it can be a challenge. So for that I like to use the grid method, which I basically overlaid a grid using photo editing software on the original photograph. I cropped the photograph to the exact ratio of dimensions as the canvas, which is two by three. And then I overlaid a grid, a five, four by six grid on it, I believe, and then very lightly drew the same, a four by six inch grid, a four, four by six block grid on the canvas. And then it's a lot easier to scale up your drawings very accurately and proportionately. Um, if you're interested in seeing, learning more about that method, I'd be happy to do a video. Feel free to leave a comment if that's something you'd be interested in learning more about. Uh, but in the meantime, um, I, we're moving right along here. I'm still using the acrylic. I've been using mostly uh, either a, a round detail brush or a flat brush. I did for a little bit there use the mop brush to try and get some texture in the fur. And... Here is where I have started using watercolor and on that ear as well when I was painting that ear. Uh, you can see it just it flows a lot more easily. It actually creates a very rich color as long as you have enough paint on your brush and it's not too watered down. Uh, you can make it work pretty well and so I just had fun with more abstract splashes and being totally okay with the paint just dripping down the canvas. Uh, to delineate the outline of the wolf. And several times it goes so fast, but I, I uh, did encourage the paint to flow a bit more by blowing on it so it would kind of fan out in a marvelous manner. I am using a fan brush, uh, I'm sorry, not a fan brush, a slanted flat brush and it's not a very big one actually, and it is almost exclusively what I used for the watercolor because you can, since it's at a slant, it comes to a, at the tip, a pretty fine point so you can get 
very nice detail work done and then you can turn it on its side to get a little bit larger area covered at one time so that just worked very well especially for the eye I was able to use that kind of tip at the highest end to create the detail and for the eye it was cadmium yellow medium along with some burnt sienna and also I was using black obviously for the shadows but I did use a tiny bit of uh, Viridian green with black mixed in for some of the corner shadows on the eye but just very faintly. the person who I did this painting for uh, wanted on the left side black and white and on the right side color which was a very cool effect so as you can see there is uh, the left side is completely in black and white grayscale and then on the right side I have a lot of fun color uh, that just really creates a nice contrast between the two halves of the wolf When I used the watercolor, I actually didn't use the normal palette that I already have made up. I actually got out my metal painting plate or palette and put fresh watercolor paint on that palette so that I was using fresh watercolor that had not dried before. That helps as well when working on canvas that so you have very fresh watercolor paint. You typically don't uh, think of using watercolors on a canvas but I mean it can be done and since I'm just so familiar and comfortable with watercolor and it's easier to make paint look like watercolor when it is actually watercolor <laughs> sorry that didn't make sense but but normally you'd think of oil or acrylic on canvas and while you can make acrylic to a certain extent look kind of like watercolor it's still easier to use watercolor that's why I did that and on this right side, just having fun with the color, creating, again, creating that outline so the wolf, the face of the wolf really stands out. And for those really dark parts, that is actually not black. That is for the most part Payne's gray. It's a very deep, rich blue, almost on the verge of black, but it just, I think, adds a nice cool tone and uh, adds a bit of richness to the color. We're getting close to the end here. And so I did, of course, want to add some splatter, which is just fun, sort of abstract kind of quality. It makes it a little whimsical, almost like an explosion of paint around the wolf and adding in some more kind of fine line details. I always, after I add a signature, have a few things when I come back to it the next day I want to add. So I have just a few more detailed lines with white gouache paint over the top here, just to give more texture to the fur. I also added a few more paint splatters and there was the end. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Until my next video, be kind to yourself, be kind to others. God bless, and I'll see you soon.